गुड मॉर्निंग माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई आई नू वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस ऑनलाइन क्लास ऑफ केमिस्ट्री टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद चैप्टर नंबर नाइन दैट इज कार्बन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न अबाउट दैट कार्बन इज एबल टू एग्जिबिट अ फिनमिन दैट इज नोन एज एलोट्रोपी राइट दैट मीन्स दी कार्बन कैन एग्जिस्ट इन मोर देन वन फॉर्म्स सो when we talk of allotropy then we have allotropes of carbon right so the allotropes of carbon can be divided into amorphous and crystalline form right? we can uh, they can be divided into it is right since we were continuing with the crystalline form so first we write crystalline and then amorphous right so the carbon can exist in these two different forms that is crystalline as and amorphous form and in crystalline form we will have already studied about diamond in the previous video and today we are just going to study about another crystalline form of carbon that is graphite so today we are just going to discuss another form that is another form of crystalline another crystalline form of carbon that is graphite okay so let us now continue that what are the properties and what are the uses of graphite so while we talk of graphite graphite is a black opaque solid it is a black opaque solid that is found in different countries like china india south korea etc while we talk of the preparation of the graphite it can be prepared artificially it can be prepared artificially how by treating coke with silica in an electric furnace okay so it is artificially prepared by strongly heating coke with silica in electric furnace and the reaction for the same as follows 3c plus that is 3c here it is a it stands for c stands for coke that is the amorphous form of the carbon so when this coke is allowed to strongly heat it is strongly heated with silica that is si2 this is silica it gives SiC that is silicon carbide and CO that is carbon monoxide. Now again, this silicon carbide is heated again, strongly heated to give silicon and graphite. by treating by strongly heating coke with silica in an electric furnace so 3c that is coke when it reacts with silica it gives silicon carbide as well as carbon monoxide but since this is not the end product that we want so again silicon carbide is heated to give silicon and graphite so this is how we can prepare coke artificially now let us talk about the properties of graphite right what are the properties what are the physical properties of graphite so while we talk of the property of graphite the first property states that it has a density of 2.7 g per centimeter cube that means the mass per unit volume of graphite or the density of graphite is 2.7 g per centimeter cube then unlike diamond it is very soft diamond is hard form of carbon right so unlike diamond graphite is soft in nature it is not hard third is it melts at a temperature of 3700 degree celsius melts at a temperature of 3700 degree celsius then unlike diamond it is a good conductor of heat and electricity It is a good conductor of heat. That means it can allow 
heat and electricity to pass through to the good conductor of heat and electricity. Last but not the least, it burns in air at 700 degrees Celsius to give CO2. Right? So it burns in air at 700 degrees Celsius to give carbon dioxide. So these are the some of the physical properties of graphite. It has a density of 2.7 gram per centimeter cube. Unlike diamond, it is soft in nature. Then it melts at 37 degrees Celsius. It is a good conductor of heat and electricity. And last but not the least, it burns in air at 700 degrees Celsius to give carbon dioxide. So these are the properties of graphite that you should be remembering. Now, while we talk of the structure of the graphite, let us see here that how the structure of the graphite basically looks like. So, I am let it off first. These small circles, they represent carbon atom, right? They represent carbon atom. And can you identify the shape of this figure? It is hexagon, right? It is a six-sided figure, right? So, the structure is basically the rings of hexagon, okay? And they are layered over one another. So, this hexagon is connected to the another one. Again, we have one more hexagon. Then, Again, this is again connected to the another one. Okay, so like that, the each layer it is hexagonal in shape. It contains layer of hexagonal rings. These are hexagonal rings. I have already told you. There is this side to the right. It is hexagon. So the each structure of the graphite has they have hexagonal rings of these carbon atoms. These are the carbon atoms that are represented, joined together. And while you look at this structure, you might be able to recognize that each carbon atom, each of the carbon atom, it is shared by three rings. It is shared by each carbon atom here. It is shared by three rings together. Okay, here also we have one ring. Okay, so each of the carbon atom, it is shared by three rings. These rings occur in different planes arranged parallel to one another. Okay, these rings, if I talk of this also, let me draw this one. So each of these rings, they basically occur in different planes, again parallel to each other. Each layer is held by the disc layer with the weak forces, right? So the two, the each layer when we talk of, the each layer is basically held by the another layer, not very strongly, they are held by the weak forces so that they can slide over one another. So while we talk of the structural, structure of the graphite, it is a hexagonal ring of the carbon atoms where each carbon atom, it is basically bounded by three rings, it is basically shared by three rings. And the rings they occur in different plates and they are held by the weak forces so that they can slide over one another. So we can, you have already looked in the previous video about the structure of the diamond. So the structure of the fight is entirely different from that of diamond. Now let us talk of uses of graphite. Right? What are the uses of graphite? So why do we talk of the uses of graphite? What are the uses? The graphite electrodes, the electrodes of the graphite, they are used widely. Graphite electrodes are used widely. Then, it is used as a solid lubricant. Okay, to use as a, you know that, what is the lubricant? lubrication for oiling of the machines. Okay, so it can also be used as a solid lubricant for the machines that work at very high temperature. We know that lubrication of the machine is very important in order to minimize friction and so that the machine can work more efficiently. So graphite is also used as a solid lubricant for the machines that work at a very high temperature. For example, for the internal combustion engine of a motor 
weaker. For these purposes, we use graphite. For the third one, graphite it leaves a mark on a paper. It leaves a mark on paper. That means even that the lead, lead of the pencil it is made up of the mixture of graphite and clay. Clay, right? In fact, the lead of the pencil of, of the is made graphite mixed with clay. Being very soft, graphite has to be mixed with clay. We have already learned about the properties of the graphite that it is soft in texture, right? Okay, so since it is very soft, it is mixed with clay, and the greater the proportion of the graphite, the softer is the pencil. So the lead of the pencil, which which you people are using for your writing work, it is made from the mixture of graphite and clay. The term graphite is derived from the word grapho, means I can write or I write. Then it is used for making crucibles for metal casting. Crucibles are like pot-like structures, okay? And casting of metal means that we are just preparing that particular, we are just making the use of that metal, one particular metal. And creating and converting it into different molds, right? Like we can use make metal coins or some other shapes. So it is used as a basically it is used for making crucibles. That is for big, big it is used for making those big pots in which the metal is casted and basically converted into different metal molds. Then a mixture of graphite and linseed oil is used for painting the things made of iron. So mixture of graphite and linseed oil is used for painting things made of iron. Right. Is a flax oil okay or the flax seed oil that is basically uh, been derived from the flax plants? It is used for painting, so the mixture of two it is used for painting the things which are made of iron so that they are not rusted and all. And it is also used in the nuclear reactors. So, what are the uses? Let us revise once again the graphite electrodes are used widely. Then it is also used as a solid, solid lubricant for the machines that are working at very high temperature. Then graphite is capable of leaving a mark on the paper. That is why the lead of the pencil is made of mixture of graphite and clay. Okay, so the more the graphite, the softer it is going to be the lead of the pencil. Then it is used for making crucibles for metal casting and it is also used the mixture of graphite and linseed oil is used for painting. The things that are made up of iron and it is also used in the nuclear reactors. So this is about the uses of the graphite. Now let us talk of fullerene and carbon nanotubes. They are also fullerene and carbon nanotubes are also the crystalline form of carbon. Yeah, that we should be knowing only that much. Since the more detail of that fullerene. And carbon nanotubes both are crystalline form of carbon. They are crystalline form of carbon. The more detail of that you will be studying in the higher physics. Okay, they are nanotubes they have played a great role in the development of a new technology that is called as nanotechnology. Right? So these two forms, fullerene and carbon nanotubes. You only need to remember that they are the crystalline forms of carbon and more details of that and these uh, nanotubes they have a, played a great role in nanotechnology and the more detail of that you would be studying in higher classes. Now let us study about amorphous forms of carbon right let us study about amorphous forms of carbon. So why we talk of amorphous form? Till now we have studied about the crystalline form and crystalline form we have studied about diamond, graphite, fullerene and carbon nanotube you would be studying in higher class. Now we have a next form that is amorphous form. What are the general 
is the explanation of the amorphous form of the carbon. So, unlike the crystalline form, the amorphous form of a substance contains loosely held particles. These particles easily separate and make available a large surface area. So, what are the specification of the amorphous form of carbon that it contains loosely held particles? Particles, right? Because of which they can easily separate out and have large surface area. So when a substance breaks into two or two new substances are created. So if we continue to break a substance, it is going to lead to the formation of the larger surface area in case of the amorphous form. So more powdery is the substance, more is the larger. More is going to be the surface area. Why? Because I have already told you that in amorphous form, the particles are loosely held. If they are loosely held, they can easily be broken. And if they are easily broken, they have larger surface area, right? So more they are broken, more powdered is the form, more is the larger surface area. So because of the larger surface area, the amorphous form of carbon of a substance is generally more active than the remember that it is more amorphous form of carbon is more active, it is more active than the crystalline form of carbon. Why? Because of the larger surface area. Is that clear? So this is a brief introduction to the amorphous form of the carbon. So you should be studying, you should be revising for today what are the properties of graphite, right? Uh, graphite is which form of carbon? What are the uses of the graphite and how the structure of graphite is different from diamond? And what is the specification for the amorphous form of carbon? So your homework is that you have to read page number 97. Okay, your homework is that you should read page number 97 and 98. Okay, you have to read page number 97 and 98 at home assignment and you have to revise the properties of graphite along with the amorphous form of carbon. Thank you my dear students. Till then wait for the next video.